fed, one communication after another. And we're restless about the impact that we are having on our world. The climate emergency, the pollution of the seas with tons and tons of plastic and microplastic, the pollution of the air with fumes, the extinction of species after species, the dangers to our bees and pollinating insects. It's easy to become weary and burdened as we think about humanity and our impact on this planet. And how do we respond to that? I think often the reaction to this sense of burden and wearisomeness is denial. It's not really that bad, surely. Or disinterest. It's not my problem, that's someone else's. I just get on with my own life. Or despair. There's just nothing we can do. We're on this road to destruction and it's all too late. But surely that is not the way forward. Christians are people of hope and of action. We cannot just sit by and give up on this world. We have to face the challenges and we have to do something and encourage others to do their part too. And so, to, so today, as we end the season of creation, I want to share three quotes with you. Words of a carpenter, a journalist, and an artist. Let's begin with the carpenter. Any guesses? <laughs> yes, Samuel. <laughs> The, 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 the answer is Jesus. I know every, um, every all-age talk, the answer is always Jesus. Well, this time it really is the carpenter Jesus and those incredible, glorious words in Matthew's Gospel. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Christians drawn across, from across the globe chose those words because they wanted to remind us all that we need to rest from overactivity the constant pressure to produce and consume more and more goods. And we now need to allow creation to rest too, to recover from our use and abuse of it. As we saw at the end of that song, the words from Leviticus about leaving, leaving some of the crop, for the animals and the poor. The Old Testament gave an emphasis on Sabbath, not just for humanity, but for nature. We need to allow nature to rest too. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We need to pause. Pause in the week, pause in the day, and just rest. Rest in the love of God. 
come to me. This month of October is Mental Health Month, a real focus on our mental well-being and the mental well-being of our neighbours. And one of the things that we need to do is to reconnect with nature because nature is immensely therapeutic. Next Saturday is Mental Health Day and next Sunday people are being encouraged to turn off social media for the day, to not follow that Twitter account or whatever and to actually look around them at the physical world rather than the virtual worlds that we sometimes are occupying at present. We need to rest our minds and our souls amid all the pressures of this complicated 21st century. Come to me. Let go of those burdens, that weariness, and allow Jesus to give rest for your souls. And then take up the yoke, the task, the yoke around our shoulders, what we need to carry, maybe the burden of someone else who is suffering at this time. But as we share that burden together, as we share that burden with Jesus alongside us, the yoke becomes light. That work of loving our neighbour includes not just our human neighbours, but the creatures and life forms too on this planet that we share. So remember the words of the carpenter and be encouraged and challenged by them. And then I turn to the words of a journalist the economics editor for The Times, Philip Aldrich. Yesterday he wrote, the UK is now a world leader in wind. And he followed that with the words, ministers talk, which immediately made me think of the wrong kind of wind. We may be a little bit cynical about our politicians or about our media. It's all talk, it's all wind. But actually the fact that the UK is becoming a world leader in wind production of electricity is something to rejoice. We have made incredible progress in producing renewable energy. And we can do so much more. And that is happening. Maybe more slowly than we want, but it is happening. There is a groundswell movement going on that from among ev many institutions to disinvest from fossil fuels. This includes the church. But this needs, I think, to be followed by an active investment in alternatives. Why is it that every United Reformed Church has yet to have solar panels on its building? Why is it that your minister and most ministers still drive petrol or diesel cars? Why is it that we're not at the forefront of making new things happen? We made a few tentative steps at End and Trinity. We're part of the eco-church eco scheme and we've changed from uh, fossil fuel to, to green renewable energy for our electricity. But there's so much more we must do in the months ahead. There isn't that much time. We do need to do this urgently, but it can be done, so be encouraged. 
And the third quote is from the artist, from David Hockney, who has been spending lockdown in Normandy. I'm living here, he wrote, in a little seven dwarfs house in the middle of a four acre field, and I'm perfectly happy. It's wonderful here. Every window I look out, I see trees, the orchard, the tall poplar trees beside the river. He goes on to say that he's learnt as he's grown older that we are part of nature, not separate, not above nature, but part of it. And his main lesson is that we love life. We need to love life, not only our own lives, but the life on this planet in all its diversity. Scientists have found that the lo global lockdown, or anthropause as they describe it, did bring real benefits to the natural world, though only for a short time. But perhaps lessons can be learnt from that pause of how we relate better to the natural world. David Hockney was fascinated by the trees that he could see from every window. And I've always been fascinated by trees. It goes back to a primary school project where we had to focus on a local tree. I chose this tall birch tree, one of the tallest birch trees I've ever known in my life. Standing tall and slim and beautiful. Trees put life into perspective, put us into perspective. Often they will outlast us, often they've been here for so long and have such a story to tell. And I'd like to end with a meditation I wrote a while ago on trees, trees in spring. Trees of God, burst forth in leaf and blossom Wave your branches in praise of the Maker. Stand tall and majestic. Humble those little creatures, the humans, to bow before your God and their God, creator of all, giver of life. Amen. I invite you for a moment to reflect on what you will act on from this challenge to look at nature again and to play our part in protecting this planet. What will you do this day, this week, this month, this year?